I just is... put the recording on. I didn't think it was so important for the other ones, but I want you to want to make sure I record. Yeah, yes, I'm, I'm sorry. This is also my uh, third class with uh, with um, uh, Judy and and with Cindy too being there. Great, thank you, Faye. Um, my name is Faye. Uh, I live in Glenview, Illinois. My um, background is like uh, Gloria's. Uh, Hebrew school as a child, not day school. Uh, I also, um, at my former congregation, um, took an adult uh, bat mitzvah class with four other women and had my adult bat mitzvah. Nice. Okay. Um, Judith Belmel. Uh, hi. Excuse me. This is my first class with Women's League and uh, I'm from the Bronx, uh, conservative synagogue dot Israel. And I also took um, after school Hebrew school and I also go to shul on Shabbat and, you know, Minyanim. Good. Okay, Judith, Judy Frank. Judy, you're muted. Judy, you are muted. Got it. Thank got you. It, got it. Um, okay, I uh, live in Skokie, Illinois, and I went to Hebrew school as a child and he actually had a bat mitzvah, but it was from a traditional synagogue. So the bat mitzvah was Friday night, so it was very <laughs> slim down to what, what they do on Saturday mornings here. But um, I do attend services, so, and I took uh, one other class uh, from Women's League, so. Good. Great. Okay, Francis Kane. Uh, yes. Um, and I, Fran, can you just move your screen a little bit so we can see your face, not just okay. from your there eyes you up? Good, thank you, thank you. Okay, I did go to uh, traditional Hebrew school. Um, I had, we didn't have a bar, or we didn't have a bar mitzvah, so we had a graduation from Hebrew school. And I um, I have taken the first advanced beginners class, but I attend synagogue and I've been singing in our synagogue choir for over 50 years, which has really wow. helped me to know a lot of the prayers. Great, thank you. Um, Judy Carlin. Hi. Um... I, uh, I live in Queens, New York. Um, I attend uh, Temple Gates of Prayer. Um, I did go to Hebrew school as a child. I'm currently studying to be bat mitzvah through the Women's League. Um, nice. I've taken a few of the classes, um, Hebrew classes, plus our cantor taught a class not too long ago. Um, and I try to go on Shabbat as often as I can. And I became active in my temple sisterhood. I'm on the sisterhood uh, planning committee. And um, yeah. Um, Good you for know, you. My Hebrew, my you, Hebrew has you. gotten immeasurably better. So Yes, the more mm -hmm. you use it, the better it will become. I also did not go to a day school. I went to religious school and I come from the Philadelphia area where the conservative synagogues do go to confirmation, which is 15 or 16. Uh, in New York, it's only a reform that do that. But um, my background was good, but my Hebrew is not great. But the more you use it, the better it becomes. And that's, and I, we will go over the, the consonants, the vowels, we will talk about the meanings of words, but the only way as I say, whenever I teach, the only way you will really be fluent is to use it. I can't make you fluent. I can make you know what the letters are. Uh, one of the good things about Hebrew is generally it's always the same. It's not like English um, where GH can mean anything um, or can be said anyway, I should say not mean. But in Hebrew, it means it's always read the same way. Um, that being said, we will talk a little bit about the vowels that if you went to religious school, at least if you went to my religious school, you would never have not have been taught them. You just sort of figure it out. Um, so we'll get to that. Um, we are going to do a little bit with the Mahsor. 
Um, there used to be a mafsor for all the holidays, a mafsor for Rosh Hashanah, for Yom Kippur, for Pesach. Um, it, uh, it actually means um, order um, and um, as opposed to the Sidur. Uh, but since we're going to be we're go Rosh Hashanah so, and Yom Kippur, the first holidays, I figured we'd do a little bit with our um, Mahsur, and then we will go to the the Sidur. And um, as I said, I don't think I have Sidur Chadash. I will see if I can find it. I'm not sure, but I I will um, give the page numbers for um, the other three Sidurim that I have. So if, if you have the when we get to the Sidur, if you have either Lev Shalem. Um, the Sim Shalom or the Slim Shalom, I will be giving the page numbers and I will give them in advance so that you can be prepared or if you want to look or at least, you know, have the page numbers ready. Um, the NRC door, we have, we talk about having prayers, but prayers can be not necessarily what's in the C door. What we have in the C door really is liturgy, which is the, 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 or, the prayers that we have we have are asked to say that have become canonized. Um, we can also pray, you know, just pray to God without liturgy. But the liturgy helps us to um, guide us. So, okay. And I will one more thing is I would ask that you not use the look at the transliteration. One of the lovely things in the Lev Shalem is we have more transliterations. But I really ask that you not look there because it just if you know the the letters and the uh, vowels, it's just going to make it more confusing. And um, so please, I ask that you do not look at the transliteration, <laughs> even though it's nice that it's in there. OK, so any questions, comments, criticisms? OK, um, uh, yes. excuse me, Judy. Sure. Um, my my temple has just recently purchased the Matsur uh, Lev Shalem, so I will be getting one through them, right. hopefully right. in the coming week. Yeah, um, I, I, most but, of the shuls that yeah are now making them available to people because yeah. I don't know about your shul, but a lot of them are going to be doing you know live stream, and so some people are going to be at home, so you can pick up a Matsur if you're not going to actually be in the building for the holidays. So that's an advantage right. that you can pick it up. Yeah, great. great. Thank you. Um, so that being said, yes. um, I have the Sidor Sim Shalom at home. I have the Etzchayim um, prayer right. book. And I also had from, I don't know, I guess we had purchased some high holiday prayer books way back when. Great. So that's what um, I have um, currently at home. Terrific. Um, Etzchayim, is that a Sidor for anybody that knows, has that book and there's Shul? Yeah. It's, not, uh, book, but it's not a sitter. Oh, is it? Is it, it? it is not a sidor. In fact, no. it is called a humash. It has the, the Torah and the Haftarot in there. Okay, so that, yeah. just so we know, the Masur, the sidor, and the humash. Those are the different yeah, books that, that we use today. Okay, so I am going to ask that actually you turn, if you have the Lev Shalem, that you turn to um page 27 um also one of the things if you're using the the left shine either when we use it for um uh the high holidays yamim hanoraim the days of awe or um on shabbat or yom tov uh one what they've tried to do they tried to make the prayers in the english more gender neutral Hebrew is not gender neutral. Hebrew is definitely gendered as are all the romance languages are the same way. It has to, everything, everything, including a pencil or a book is either masculine or feminine. Um, but in the English, they've tried to make it more gender neutral. They've also actually tried to um, make it a little bit more direct translation. So you can sort of match the words in Hebrew and in English, which I really like. Um, and we'll do a little bit of that. A little, we're not going to do total translation, but we will do keywords, um, except for, I will tell you the Ashamnu, and we'll talk about that later. Okay, so I am on page 27, I think. Okay, 
Um, let's see. Okay. Um, this the this prayer is Psalm 27. Um, if you've been going to show lately, you will have been reading this because we start on the first of Elul. We read it in the morning and in the evening, not in the afternoon service, but in the morning and the evening, including Shabbat and Yom Tov. We read this prayer. Um, one of the things that I do usually in the class is I emphasize what prayers, liturgy that we say out loud, because you, whatever you do silently, it's that to your own business, whether you do English or Hebrew, but the ones that we do out loud, I'd like you to be able to sing with the Chazan um, and uh, join in. And so those are the ones that we generally will use, um, will be using teaching um, in the class. Okay. If you go down, Adonai, Ori is the first line, Adonai. And speaking of that, Adonai in the, in this, in Lev Shalem is yud Hey vav Hey. Okay, now how does that say Adonai? It doesn't really say, it, I mean, there's no way to read that if you only, if you only see yud Hey vav Hey. But we know that that is the name for God. When people talk about <clears throat> the name for God, it is yud Hey vav Hey. We also see Adonai spelled out, which is Lord, um, capital L, but it's another name for, it's another way we refer to God. But the yud heh vav -Hey is the word that, that's actually the name that we don't really know how to pronounce. Um, and that's why it doesn't have any vowels because it, if you put vowels, it doesn't make any sense. So in this Sidur and Mahsur, they don't have any vowels under Adonai, just as my my bias, um, G-O-D is not God's name. Just as Elohim is not God's name and Adonai spelled out is not God's name. yud heh vav -Hey is God's name. Um, that we don't write out on things that we're gonna be thrown away, um, but you can write G-O-D with a capital. Okay, so we go down and we're gonna go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines. Okay, and I'm gonna, one of the things that, that I learned from my students is that I read it first, just so that you can see hopefully how it's actually pronounced properly. And then I ask that, our, that the students read also, because that's the only way you can practice. So, Achad, Achat, Sha'alti, May Eight, Adonai, Ota, Avakesh, Shivti, Bevet Adonai Kol Yeme Kayai Aye Le Lachzor Benoam Adonai Ulvaker the Hechalo. Okay, uh, uh, I now I can't now I'm, I'm gonna lose the tune. The people that have been in my class before, sometimes I have the tune and sometimes I lose it. Um, but this is some I, can I ask for a volunteer to read? Okay, Judith. Achat sha'alti me'et Adonai ota avakesh. Shiviti bechei Adonai kol yemei chaye. Lachazot bino am Adonai ulvakesh ulvaker bechei kalo. Great, 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 great. Okay, so you know with the dot and not the dot. Um, the, the um, bet is a B instead of a V, and the H is a H instead of a K. Um, we will see it in, if you look in Achad Sha'alti Me'et Adonai Ota Aba Kesh. People ask sometimes, why does that have a dot in it, the next to the last letter? Because there's no other way to read it, actually, other than a true K. Um, if you read it, exactly the way it, it in the detail it actually means that if that letter is supposed to be part of the the um before and after uh the syllable but we don't when you read it actually you won't hear that but that it, but the grammar of it has that letter as part of the syllable before and the syllable after so that's why with it with the dot um uh there don't seem to be any other vowels that are issues here. 
There will be other ones that are issues um, that we'll do. We're going to go to page 32 because I like this one. I, normally, I will ask you to more than one person to read, but I'm going to skip that. Um, hand washing. We start on page 32 at the top. Baruch. And this is obviously some of these prayers are the same always. Um, some are specific to Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. This is this prayer obviously is said anytime you are having a meal. What does anybody know what constitutes a meal as far as the rabbis were concerned? What makes it a meal? Yes, Cindy. Uh, you you're um, muted. Having yes. bread. Having bread, exactly. Thank you very much. Um, the rabbis and my father agree. That's what makes it a meal. Um, you don't have to have challah, except for on Kagim and Shabbat. It can be any kind of bread, um, but bread is what makes it a meal. Um, and but as part of, we often do the motzi, which we'll get to, um, but part of that is we begin when we're, when we're actually eating bread by washing our hands first before we do the mochi. Judith, right. Judith yes. I have a question. What, sure. what book are you in? Because I'm not able to follow you. This um, is what I have. Lev Shalem. This is what I have. What Just, do you have? Hold it up. That's a sidor, not a mafsor. Okay. Okay. So I can um, follow you. Okay, I, I sent and uh, we'll do it for next week and maybe I'll try to actually take pictures and send the pictures <laughs> of the prayers for next week so you can see them. Um, yes, Cindy. I tried doing that link for the Matsura. You couldn't go there? See, it's open for me. I didn't try to print, but it definitely opened. Did it open for you, the pages? Mm -hmm. No. No? Okay. Well, I'm going to see if I can do it. What I'll do is I'm going to take pictures and I'll send them as an attachment. For people that don't have it for next week i will send it i will send the pictures of the pages and as an attachment and soon we'll be on the sidurim so that will we won't have this problem anymore because hopefully everyone except for fran has one of those other sidurim and i'm going to see if i have sidur kadash or if you can get a different one it's yes. okay I've, I've got that and the monks are left the lane for you for the high holidays good but the issue is for this but most of the time we're going to be working on the sidur not the mouth once we finish with Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, we are going to move to the Sidur. Okay. Um, okay. So, and we we go to many B'nai Mitzvah, weddings, whatever, when they do the Motzi. But it, actually, the Motzi is supposed to be preceded by hand washing. So the hand washing is Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Mela. Olam, a share keep shanu the mitzvot tav the tivanu al nitilat yadayim. Okay, yadayim is hands. Okay, and the, the beginning of the pray of the bracha is the same as many other brachot. Um, all the ones that we attach to at being a mitzvah. Okay, could keep shanu the mitzvot tav. Okay. I have a volunteer. Yes, Arlene. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kiddishanu B'mitzvah Tal V'tzivanu Al Niti Leit Now look at it again. Niti Lat Good, perfect. Yadayim. Good. Okay. But we can we can learn something that I learned from Cindy. Um, there, when we read Hebrew, generally speaking, the last the emphasis is on the last syllable. Okay. Baruch Ata Elo Um not Elohenu Melech Haolam. Um, but if you see in Yadayim under the Dalid, you'll see the little T, but you also see a straight line. Okay. And if you look in Melech, 
you'll see under the mem, the same thing, the three dots and the straight line. What the straight line is called, and Kitshanu, it has the same thing under the shin. It has the T and the straight line. The straight line is called a meteg. And what it means, it moves the emphasis to that syllable. It's always, as far as I figured out, the next to the last syllable. Rather than the last syllable, it puts the emphasis on the next to the last syllable. And mostly you will know it just because if you know the prayers, you just know how to say it. But um, if you're trying to read, especially something that you don't know, um, that helps to know. So it's not yadayim, it's yadayim. So it puts, it moved this emphasis to the next to the last syllable. Okay, next we have the motzi. Um, would I, you, what, what, can, what is wrong with saying, next we have the hamotzi? Um, Gloria. Amen. Thank you. Good, good, good. Because I'm sure that's not the first time you've heard somebody say the hamotzi. But this way, you know, it's the same way I said that we're not going to know every word that we're reading. Some things it's nice to know. And what Hebrew does is that's very different from English is it takes a word and it adds prefixes and suffixes that we don't do. We In English, we have separate words. We'll say we read. That's two separate words. But in Hebrew, it will be one word because the we will be attached to the to the uh read so that's one of the differences with hebrew and english that's why oftentimes you'll see um when it's a translation it'll be longer than the hebrew because it's because of the prefixes and suffixes so the ha baruch ata adunai elohim hamosi lechem min ha'aretz okay I have a volunteer, Cindy. And then I'm going to have Judy because I'd like us to read this because I really want us to know this. Is, this is good to know. Yes, Cindy. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech alam hamotzi. Wait, wait, wait. Yes. Hamotzi lechem min haoretz. Good. Haoretz. Okay. And we're going to get to that when we get to a word that's different that shows that which we don't haven't gotten to yet. Um, okay, lechem is bread, okay? When we talk about having what, what this prayer is for, it's for bread. That, and when you say the, um, the advantage of saying the, the, the motzi is that covers everything you eat. There is a separate bracha if you're only having grapes or if you're only having candy, if you're only having cake. There is a separate bracha, but if you do the motzi, that covers everything in the meal. So you don't have to say separate bracha for each of the different things. Okay, now we have this one, especially for, I would like everybody to know this. This is for Rosh Hashanah. Um, it's we, one of the lovely things about Rosh Hashanah is eating apples and dipping them in honey which we are doing for, we're asking for a sweet new year and the honey is going to give us the sweetness. Um, so there's a special bracha for that because we are in fact supposed to do that. And it is Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Mela Ha'olam Borei Hari Ha'et. Okay. Eight. Three. Thank you, great. And pre is uh, the short form uh, for fruit, actually, it's fruit of the tree. Fruit of this makes it pre. Okay, who's going to read? Judith, did you volunteer before or Judy? And then Faye. You read already, Judith. You don't need to read. Faye. Me? Okay. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Malacha Olam Borei Pari Ha'etz. Good. Good. Um, Okay, um, then, okay, this is, this is attached to it. We don't necessarily have to read it, but I'd like to read it just because it's, um, it's nice. Yehi ratzon milfanecha adonai eloheinu belohe avotenu. And you can't say the imotenu. 
שתחדש עלינו שנה טובה ומתוקה. Okay, so we're asking for it to be, we're asking God, Eloheinu, the new ending is we, first person plural. Eloheinu is, I'm, li I'm listening, God. anybody? Our, our God. Good, our God, great, first person plural. Elohe Abotenu. And the, the God of our fathers, our fathers, or you can usually, if what we can do is we can actually, I say ancestors because it's fathers and mothers, um, but it is masculine. But whenever you have, if you have men and women in Hebrew, the default is using the masculine. Um, but if you want to specifically say <laughs> our foremothers, you can add the imotenu. Ima is mom, mother, uh, mommy actually, our mothers, if you want to add that and be specific rather than just saying avotenu. Techadesh aleinu, chadesh is new, renew. Us, aleinu is all, our, us. Shana tova umituka. And that is any one of the three words, if you don't know all of them. Sweet. Sweet is mato, good. 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 Tava is good. Shana. No. Year. Year. Year, great. Thank you. A good and a sweet year. That's what we wish everybody. So that's a shana tova umituka. Okay. Great. Um, let's see. Okay, let me see. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay. Um, we are going to skip this, I think. Um page 91. Let me just see what's on 91 and then we'll decide. Okay, we're going to do 91, and this is something that I didn't look to see what page it is, and actually I might be able to, might have it somewhere. This is also part of the, let me see. Okay, if you look at the last, the Sim Shalom is in every Amidah. Okay, Sim, Sim, Sim Shalom, Sim Shalom, Tava Ubraha. Okay, that's in everyone, but on the high holidays, we add the Sefer Chaim Bracha. The last paragraph, there's a last line, but there's a paragraph that's in dark. One of the things that um, this Moxor also has, when something is bold, it's something that we do out loud. So it's just as you, if you know, um, you, ha you have to know what it's each book as a, its own gimmicks, but that's what it, one of the things in this book. It, it's bold, and that means we do it out loud. And we're going to get to that. Amcha Beit Yisrael Lechayim Lechayim, sorry, we know that. Lechayim Tovim U Shalom. Okay. The Sefer Chaim. What does that mean? In the book what of life. One of the things we're talking about on this holiday. Book of life. Great. Book of life. Good. We all know say Lechayim when we drink. So Sefer is book, so it's the book of life. Okay. Bracha comes from, does anybody know? Blessing. Either blessing. one. Baruch. Good. Great. Baruch. For the blessing. Bishalom. Peace. peace. We all know that. Parnasa. Okay. It's earnings. They translate it as sustenance. It's actually like it's talking about money. You, you right. Like when you work, you get parnasa. You get, get, get paid for it. Tova, good, we already decided good. that. 
okay? Nizacher, the Nichtav, remembered, Zahor, the Nichtav, which comes from Kote, written. Written. Good. Lifanecha, okay? Um, before us, uh, before you, good. For you. Anachnu, the whole Ancha Beit Israel. Anachnu. Us. Right, or we, the whole Amcha Beit Israel. Am Israel. People of Israel. Good, good. So it's the so it's from the house of Israel. All of the the nation of the house of Israel. Lachaim, we talked about that. That's that's life. Tovim, goodness, Lu shalom and peace. We have a lot of prayers that will ask for peace. That's in we. Unfortunately, don't have it too often, but we have a lot of prayers that ask for this. And this will be sung a lot of times during the high holidays. The Sefer Okay, so does any, I need a volunteer that hasn't read yet. I don't have the right book. Judy Frank. Judy Frank and then Francis. I don't I have the right book. I can't okay. find it. In I don't have them. You can't find it. Okay, I promise for next week I will. I will send pictures of everything for people that don't have it. I didn't hear from everybody, so I wasn't sure. So I promise for next week I'll have it. Yes. If you're in, if you have any Mahsur, I don't know yeah. if you have it in front of you. If you have the, um, you're in the Amida, okay, yeah. the repetition of the Amida, yeah. and it's after Sim Shalom. Okay. So if you have a Mahsur, it's in the Amida, the paragraph after Sim Shalom. Okay, so anybody that has the mock would like to read. Gloria. The Sefer Chaim, Baroha B'Shalom, Ufarnasa Tova, Nizacher Vini Katev Lefanecha, Anachnu Vichol Amcha, Beit Yisrael Lechaim Tovim Ulushalom. Great, okay. This is another thing I just, now we first found out this, vowel that um, shows up in this door. Um, it looks like a T, but it's longer. So it looks like the vowel we pronounce A, ah, but it's not pronounced A, ah, it's pronounced O. Oh. Cold, cold. And the way it is designated in this book is by having a long, the, the line in the bottom is longer. In some of the Sidorim, it's a line and a dot because they want it in old cedarim. You won't see any distinguish. They all they will all look like a T, but our conservative movement decided to make it a little easier for us since we don't all know grammar and how it should be pronounced. So they actually designate they show it differently than the ah one. Okay, so that would be that you'll see occasionally, we haven't seen it yet. This is the first time we came across it. Okay, would anybody else like to read? You guys have to be able to read or else, and I know not everybody has the book and we, I promise next week you'll have all, you will have the pages to read. They sing um, it for you. Okay, that's fine. But I, I haven't got the stuff, but say fair time to that, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, but it's not exact. It's that. Yeah, I have to get, have to get my music, my pages. Okay, just a minute. Yeah, yeah. Okay, next week I promise I'll have them. I apologize. Okay, anybody else? Arlene. Um, but I can't do it as fast as everyone else. It no, um, doesn't have to be fast. Nobody's asking for fast. Uh, the Sefer Hayim Biraha. Vishalom Ufar Nasa Tova Ni Saher Vini Ha Tev Good Lifa Necha Good Ava Ava No, read it. What is it? Um, Anat Nu. Good. Bikol uh, Amcha 
Beit Yisrael lehayim tovim u shalom. Good. I'd like to hear the melody of it. I don't remember the melody. And I don't know if it's a lighter print on the book or my eyes are going, but it's hard. It should be because actually this prayer, because it's said out loud, is actually bolder. If you look on top or above, on, above it or below it, it's bolder. So we should be able to see that, but I don't make any promises. Okay, Avinu okay. Malkeinu. Anybody that has a Moxor? Yes. Judy, um, why in Seem Shalom don't they ever say uh, the next word, Ba Olam? It's not in the singing of it. Seem, Seem, Seem Shalom, then you go Tova we, right away. We do say it actually. Seem, Seem, Seem Shalom, Seem Shalom, Tova Ubraha, Ba Olam, Seem, Seem, Seem Shalom, Tova Ubraha. You do say it the first time. You don't say it the, when you go through it, but did you hear I had said it? I did, yeah. Okay, so that's the way it's supposed. Uh, that's one of the tunes. I'm sure there are other tunes too. I have uh, our our cantor does other tunes as well, but that's the one I know the best. That's the one we used to do in junior congregation, and that's a prayer that we do all the time. That's the, okay. Okay, now Avino Makenu. Okay, that is in every Wednesday door. If you're in the morning service, right after. The Mida Amida, you should see Avinu Malkenu. If you have a Mahsor, it's pretty it's obvious. Okay, on in the Lev Shalem, it's on page 92, but it's a, right after the repetition of the Amida. Avinu Malkenu. I want a translation. Our father. Good, good. We, we, one of the things we talk about is the roots and the root of Avinu is Ab or father. And the new we said is our first person plural. Melech is king. Malkenu is our king. Okay, so we know we're not going to do every word, but it's nice to have a in your mind that you're talking to the sovereign. Okay, that's another way we say in, I don't know where, here, actually they do not translate it. They just say Avinu Malkenu. They don't translate it at all. But if you have in your mind that you're talking about actually two different ways of thinking of God. Um, I think very differently of the sovereign or the father. Um, a father is much more loving and compassionate, whatever. And the king, but I guess I think just in the Yana Diyom and the, uh, the day that we're talking about, it's how sort of people say about the queen, actually. They thought people in, in Great Britain and people in the British, under the British monarchy have multiple feelings towards the queen, had towards the queen. So, and so it, it's not just the sovereign, but they thought of her almost as a parent. Um, and that's how we think about God, especially at this time of year. Um, Okay, I am going to, uh, all right, I'm going to read. Avinu Malkenu, Hatanu Lifanecha. Avinu Malkenu, Ein Lanu Melech, Ela, Ela, Hata. Avinu Malkenu, Ase Imanu, the Amaan Shemecha. This is just practicing Hebrew also. They, 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 you can use it for anything, obviously. It's not just this prayer. But we're gonna the next the, at the end we're gonna do all do it. Avinu Malkenu Vitel Maal Me Alenu Kol Gizerot Kadsho Kashot. Sorry. Avinu Malkenu Vatel Mahshavot Sa it's a sin in Adashin. So Nainu Avinu Malkenu a fair atat O Venu, Avinu Makenu, Kala, Kol, Sar, Umashtin, Me Alenu, Avinu Makenu, Kale, Dever, Vechev, Rev, Venaraav, Ushvi, Umashit, Vaavon, Ushmor, 
Mi bnei beitecha. We're not going to read all this. Avinu, the last part, we're, I'll tell you this part we're going to read. I want somebody to read the first two lines and then this part. Avinu malkenu talachlanu machalanu ono ono tenu avinu malkenu mehe avha aver pasha enu to the to tenu meneged enecha. Okay, that this is the part we don't read so much. When we get to the next part, this is the part we can read. I'm not even gonna. We're not gonna go there because this part is. If you can see, it's in bold. Avinu malkenu achazerenu b'tshuva shlema lefanecha. Avinu malkenu shalach rifua shlema lechole amecha. Avinu malkenu zochrenu b'za b'zikaron tov lefanecha. Somebody just those three lines. Anybody? Avinu malkenu in bold. Okay, Faye, and then Gloria. Okay, Avinu Malkenu Ahazirenu Bitshuva Shlema Lefanecha. Avinu Malkenu Shlach Rifua Shlema Lefole Amecha. Avinu Malkenu Zachrenu Bezicharon Tov Lefanecha. Judith, same lines or next? You one? can, whatever you like. Okay. Avinu Malkenu Katvenu Besefer Chaim Tovim. Good. One second, stop. Stop, one second. Avinu Malkenu Kotvenu. Remember I talked about the vowel? Nobody's yeah. gonna nobody's gonna shoot you if you read Katvenu, I guarantee you. And you won't be the only one that reads it. But if you're going to read it properly, it really has the O sound. You can see the difference in the vowel, right? It's not so easy because the the obviously you have to have good eyes, but you can see the difference between that. And if you look at Gula under the Lamed, it's a much smaller T. The Kotvein under the cuff, it's a much bigger one with a long line on the bottom. Okay. Do you see it, Gloria? Yes. Okay. Okay. Continue. Avinu Malkenu Katvenu Besefer Geula Beyishua. Good. Avinu Malkenu Katvenu Katvenu Besefer Parnasa Bechalkala. Good. Two more lines. Avinu Malkenu. Katvenu besefer zehuyot. Avinu malkenu katvenu besefer saliha umhila. Good. Avinu malkenu kodvenu. And we talk oftentimes, we just talk, we think about one book, the book of life. But here we're talking about many different books. Okay, there's a book of life and goodness. There's a book of Rafua Shlema we talk about if somebody's ill, uh, good health, health, okay? And uh, so this is talking about all, there's not just one book, there's a lot of books that we're talking about that God is thinking about. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna, would anybody else like to read any of that? Because this we do read out loud, so anybody? Judy, you wanna volunteer? Good, Judy Carlin. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm trying to think, figure out where the uh, other lady left off. Um, so stop me if I'm wrong. Avinu Malkenu, Avinu Besefes Licha Umahila. Is that read already? Yeah, but I, I wouldn't read any further because we're not going to do this out loud. Because I'd like you to, you know what I'm going to ask you to do? I'm going to ask you to change, to turn the page. If you have the this book, um, in the last two lines, this we okay. sing a lot. Uh, at okay. the at the end of a vina machine. Right. Right. Yes. Yep. Uh, well, all right. Let me know if this is right. 
um, Adinu Malkenu, Hanenu Yevaanu, He Ain Banu Maashin Ase, He Manu Sedaka, the Hay, oh, the Hay, the Hesed, the Ho Shienu. I think we sing that. Avinu Malkenu, Honenu Baanenu. And now we sing a lot, a rusty. that's why I think it's nice to be able to know that one. I appreciate. Um, we have more. I'm not going to do it because I, this is a problem when you don't have the books. But I just want to see, I just want to explain, I guess, we, and even though I want to do more Eber reading, but I don't want to put anybody at the disadvantage, the people that don't have the book. Um, we will next week, I promise. And we're going to do a little bit from Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, but I think we're going to move to Hallel after that. And Hallel, we'll have, uh, when when do we do Hallel, anybody? And Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah, good. When else do we do Hallel? The Chagim holiday. The Chagim. Right. Thank yeah. you, all the holidays we do it. And so that is will be appropriate for, excuse me, for this time of year with Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot, which is coming up, and Shmini Chakat Seret. And we also do it, obviously, on Rosh Chodesh and other holidays. So we will do that. We will go to that. And that we won't go to our Cedarim. So I don't have to. So hopefully everybody, except for Judy, and Judy's going to see if we're going to see what we can do for her. Everybody has either the Sim Shalom, the Slim Shalom, or the Lev Shalom Cedar. Yes. Okay. So um, we're going to ask for, ask for that. Um, any questions, comments, criticisms? Let's see. Uh, Is there anything in particular that you'd like to do? We had last time we had people that wanted to study the um, prayer for the state of Israel. Um, we hopefully can are are able to do the the bracha for the aliyah to the Torah, but we will go over that. We'll go over some of the stuff from the Torah service because. We sing it and we go, you know, for any time we do the Torah service on, on Chag or on Shabbat. Um, so I, because, and the reason I'm, the reason obviously we could do practice Hebrew with any Hebrew. It could be from anywhere. Um, the reason I try to pick things we do a lot is because God willing, if you go to Shul or listen to Shul, you will be, you will be able to hear it again. You'll be able to participate and it will be practice for you. Um, so either in, in person or online, but that's the reason we pick those so that you can work on your fluency because you'll be working on those prayers if you go to school. So it could be, obviously it could be any Hebrew. And if there's any particular Hebrew, like the prayer for, for Israel or anything else, please speak up. Um, I, this just as somebody, somebody started with the bat mitzvah curriculum from Women's League. And that's actually how this course came about. The, the um, Women's League started with this adult bat mitzvah class and um, found out that the people that were in the class, there were a number of them that felt that their Hebrew wasn't as good as it should be. And, and this, these programs, the Hebrew programs, came out of that. Um, we actually have a lot more people in the Hebrew classes than we do in the bat mitzvah class, which is okay. Um, this may be the last term that it's taught um, because Women's League feels like there are too many things after this term um, for, to prepare for the convention. But we'll see what happens. Um, and I hope everybody comes to convention and you can practice and use everything you've learned. Any other questions? Yes, Gloria. Uh, two things. One, can you aid Misha Beirach to the prayers? We sure. And also some of us, I think years ago learned the vowels differently and i know that i have difficulty remembering to change yes. and very often i'm mixing do you have any tips on not doing that other than um, 
Yes, because because we used to do Ashkenazi Hebrew, mm. and we and mm. and now since the state of Israel, depending on when your shul got their Hebrew teachers from Israel, um, it, that really was a big difference. Um, we started using Sephardic Hebrew, so we don't the S and the T is different, um, and the A. Uh, and the awe oh is different because in he and Ashkenazi mm. Hebrew, it's all the awe oh sound, all oh sound. It's not the ah with the mm. e, the regular mm. t. Um, that part of it is how I, um, whenever you see the tough at the end of a, it's always a t. It's never an s. Whether it has a dot or it doesn't have a dot, it's always a t. If you do the bar to Hebrew, if you have the underneath the t. I'm sorry, really, I'm bad at, at L names. Um, or if you have a longer T, one is O, like an O, and one is like an A. And so that's, to me, actually, the our Cedarim and our Moxor makes it much easier to know. If you use, like, a Birnbaum, if you remember that book, that was the Cedar that we used, Black Cedar, there is no difference, and you just have to know. But in ours that we use, if you use either the Lev Shalem or the Sim Shalom, it is distinguished by looking different. So if you do that, that really solves the problem. It should solve the problem for you. You just have to be a little bit, pay more, a little bit more attention. Um, and that, and because it actually does show and you, it, you don't have to know what the difference is, which you used to have to know the difference. And you know what? If you do the other one, nobody will shoot you. <laughs> we're, we're trying to learn as as accurately as possible possible but the I, what comes from your heart as more important than anything else as far as i'm concerned so um okay so we will have just i would like to do a shamnu and then i think we're going to actually we may do the kiddushim the, the the kiddush for lunch and for dinner we'll see um but i will include anything that is not in the Sidur um, in the next email. Also, um, the, the classes are recorded. Um, and if you miss a class, you can listen to it. And I will send the instructions on how to get to the classes. Um, obviously, there are people that aren't here, and I'd like to send it to them. But um, for anybody that misses the class, you can go back and look. And even if you want to just hear it again or hear pieces of it again, you can go back and look at the class. And I will send the directions for the accessing the recordings. Any other questions? Okay, so we got to 11 o'clock. I want to say welcome, welcome to the new people that I've just met, to my friends from previous classes. It's a pleasure to see you. Um, and I love this class. That's why I, that's why I do it. Um, uh, and I say thank you. And I wish everybody a Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.